practice today, you know what's at stake, they know what's at stake. How do you gauge where they are knowing that in two days everything you worked for for six, seven months kind of gets put on the table? Regular season is great, but this is what it's about. Yeah, well, you look at the intensity, you look at the care factor, you look at the communication, you look at all those things to see where they are. And it was, it was high communication, high energy, definitely a care factor. Guys understand where we are right now. It was obviously a pretty tough loss on Saturday, but does it feel a little better now knowing that it wouldn't have done anything for you in terms of like conference finishing? I don't really like moral victories if you know me. Obviously, I wanted that game because it would have just been a, a great game to have. You know, you beat FAU two times in one season, and at their building where they were undefeated, it would have been great. But hindsight is what it is. You know, we, we wanted to win that game for a lot of reasons. Penny, when you've had a team that's had like really, really high highs and maybe not so high highs at times, what are you looking at now? that gives you confidence that you're going to find consistency in Fort Worth for four days? What well, gives me confidence that this, this team has the talent. It's got to put it together and play hard. There's two areas that you got to do. You got to get back in transition and you got to box out. Those are the two areas we struggled in the most during this season in our in our conference. Not non-conference, but in our conference. So I feel like we square those things up. That gives me the utmost confidence. But if you don't rebound the ball and you don't get back in transition, give people easy baskets and second chance points. It's tough to win. What were your thoughts on the effort in those areas? Rebounding, getting back on defense, guarding the perimeter? Early in the game, yes. Yeah, second half, no. Don't know what happened in the second half. Obviously, it was very hot in there, uh, in that building. Uh, seemed like they turned the air off. They got a good home court advantage in there. And uh, and then they just, they're used to playing there. And our guys seem extremely tired, more than normal. So at the end of the day, we didn't get it done in those areas, rebounding and uh, getting back in transition. How's the health of the team going into the tournament? How's the health of the team going into the tournament? The health of the team is really good. There's no injuries, I mean major injuries. There's knickknacks with everybody because it's at the end of the season and uh, nothing major though. Eddie, nothing's been easy for you guys this year. Uh, whether it's been the 10-game winning streak and then the struggles and then playing. I guess this, this is the way it was supposed to go. If it's been hard all year, let's make it hard at the end. Well, I mean, you can look at it a lot of ways. It's, it's been it's been, uh, been a roller coaster. We don't have Caleb, we don't have Malcolm. You know, we won four out of five without Malcolm. Hopefully he's cleared before the tournament. We need his big body, we need him out on the floor. We need his presence, and we're doing this without him. You know, the good sign is hopefully he'll be ready by the time conference starts. Well, you have a preference between maybe Wichita or Rice? And no, Virginia. no, not at all. We just want to lock in on ourselves because we know what we have to do. And when you do that, you don't worry about who you play. When you look at pressure, Penny, when, when you're a team that knows you're getting in, you can play three. You did that last year, you did yeah. that the year before. Yeah. For your team, how do you worry about that? Because even if you get the first one or the second one, there's still two more to go. How do you deal with the pressure that these guys know, like you know, that you guys you have to win in Fort Worth to go? I mean, it's, just, it's basketball. We put ourselves in this situation, and you got to play your way out of it. And if you get the first two, like you said, and the third one, you get hungrier. And the fourth one, you get hungrier. So to me, you just got to get past the first one and then get to the next one. The first one is the most important. Not that you want to give anything away, but is there anything specific that you do to account for potentially having to play four games in four days that might, you know, uh, just something different that you haven't done? No, we're just challenging the bench way more than we have. When I mean, you need the bench to come in and sustain. You know, we put the bench in at FAU, we were up seven. And that, that, that lead went away really quickly. We had to get the starters back out there. I feel like those guys are very capable of keeping the lead and putting, pushing the lead further. Uh, Jordan Brown didn't have a good first half. Joe Cooper didn't have a good first half. Uh, Jalen Young didn't have – Jaden was the only one off the bench that really had a great game overall. So we need everyone, even if you're not scoring, to rebound, box out, you know, protect the ball. So we feel very confident that those guys can do that. I need to kind of go off of that. It seemed like, I guess, the air – was let out of the balloon, you know, when those reserves came in. Is that a matter of combinations you're putting out there, maybe you reassessing that, or is that just a matter of making those guys to elevate their game? No, in that case, guys were asking to come out of the game. They said they were more tired than normal. You know, I pulled David Jones out in the first three minutes. He asked me to come out. Quinterly was exhausted. I don't know what it was. Maybe it was the heat or whatever, but that's a home court advantage for those guys. They were way more, more tired than I've ever seen them. Can you 
get a guy like David Jones, when you get a guy like Nick Jordan, those are guys that never played in the NCAA tournament. How big a carrot do you think that is for those guys and other guys on your team that have never played in the big dance with an opportunity now that if they get four and four, this is what they came here to do? Yeah, it, as weird as, that, weird as that seems, you know that when you start the season. You know that when you start conference, this is what you're playing for. And we were in the driver's seat, and they kind of took it lightly. Now the character is really big. It's like we got, we know what we have to do now. It's really crazy how that works because I'm saying in the beginning of the conference, you can write your own ticket and keep it going. We faltered, and now getting to this point, they are more excited and saying we know what we have to do. So it's better late than never. But you also have a, you have a veteran experienced team. It may not be an NCAA tournament experience. What does that mean to you now that these were the guys you brought in that have played in big games, conference tournament games, you mentioned it on your show. You have to feel good about the loads of talent that this team takes. Yeah, I really feel like, you know, I feel really good going into the conference because we have a ton of talent. Our first five has a ton of talent. Everybody brings what they bring to the table. And now that we've established a quote-unquote big three, and then the rest of the group just has to carry their weight as well. And I think these, those three guys are going to be ready to play. The entire team needs to be unified and doing what we need to do. Do you think the team has the right mindset to get this done? Oh, absolutely. I think, you know, watching today, after a tough loss at FAU, the guys understand now it's do or die. It's win or go home. I'm not asking you to obviously throw anybody under the bus or anything, but it seems like, I guess, last year you didn't have to push buttons or pride and poke. Those guys were fired up every single day. Has that been difficult this year to have to find what buttons to press, get guys motivated, get them up? To not, you know, diss anybody. Kendrick Davis's drive along with DeAndre Williams's drive and Alo's drive, those three guys, everybody else just followed that stream. We didn't have that this year. Caleb was that guy. And now that Caleb has been gone, everybody's just playing basketball. There's not like a a leader saying, we're going to go and we're going to do this, like Kendrick Davis, DeAndre Williams, and Ayla were saying last year, and everybody just followed. It's just a talented group. So it is. it has been harder because we had, going into conference, we had it right in our hands and just gave it away. I don't think that, and I'm not trying to compare teams, I just don't think that last year's team, if they would have been in that position, would have gave it away. They just, Kendrick Davis really wanted to make the NCAA tournament. You knew it from day one. You just knew it. Has there been anyone on the team that's maybe tried to fill that void in that leadership role, or is everyone just being not vocal? Um, I think these guys are, as weird as it seems, they're a great group. They love one another. It just hasn't been the focus on a lot of talk about wanting to make the tournament. And now they're like, we got to win four games to make it to the tournament, and we got to go do it. So it's really weird, like I said, because usually you get a group who hasn't won to stay hungry all year going, dog. We cannot lose games because we want to make it. How shell shocked have they been by this? Were they just like always assuming they were going to make the tournament? Like not going to be in this position? It looked like the team was just assuming that we were just going to make the tournament. And you got to go play. I think a lot of guys were shocked by our league. Our league is very physical and tough. And that shocked a lot of our, our guys. How important is the bench for four games in four days? It's very important. Even if it's three days in three games, the bench is so important because you're not going to play Six guys in three days. You never know if you're 30 something minutes a game. It's, just, it's tough. Jenny, when you look at this opportunity, it's never been done. The Memphis has never been in a position where they had to win four days, four mm -hmm. games in four days. There's something about making history. Not that you need any added motivation, mm -hmm. but how cool would that be in the season that you had to end it with a history making performance in Fort Worth that gets you in the NCAA tournament? Yeah, that's what, to me, that's what life and sports are all about. They parallel. You know, you, you, you fight for what you want to fight for, and we're fighting right now. And it would be great to win four games in four days that has never happened before after what's gone, what we've gone through with injuries and with Malcolm and, uh, and not having our guys. So it's, it would be great. Do you have any sense at all that you could get news from Malcolm for by 1.30 on Thursday? I hope so. I hope so. If not, during the tournament at some point, and then we can win and get him back. So there is a chance that we can see him again. I hope so. I'm, I'm waiting just like you guys. I really do hope so. Penny, obviously, we got to see where these chips fall and kind of reassess whatever. Um, but for example, your, your post last night on Instagram, is that, what is that about? Is that perception from the fans? Is that us? No, I laugh, I laugh at our city. I never talk about the media. You guys have a job to do. It's just, it's funny to me how guys are always talking about how I need to be fired. <laughs> man, I, I, I get it. But man, well, I, I took this job because it was, the, it was as low as it had been. I don't need any sympathy from anybody. 
I gave up my retirement to come here and help the University of Memphis in the city. And I feel like I've done a great job. I know it's only a few guys, but I laugh at that. But what we've, what we've accomplished as a group, I look at it in, in four years. I inherited a group and went to the second round of the NIT, granted. The next group was an NIT group. So I've really had four years to try to do what I've done. I feel like I've done pretty well. I'm not resting on anything, like I said. I want to be in NCAA tournaments, making it to the Final Fours. It just has to match. When you're putting teams together, 12, 13 guys every year, you never know when that's going to gel. And when we won early, it spoiled all of us. And then when you go the other way, it's just not, it doesn't, it's weird. I'm, I'm, I'm first to say we had some really bad losses at home and then take care of business, but the chemistry has to be there. It's not just about talent. Aside from, those, aside from that crazy segment of fans, like you just mentioned, do you feel like the criticism has been fair overall, given you know the you know, as good as anybody else, the high standard of this program that you, know, you helped instill as a player and so on and so forth? Yeah, well, the standard of the program has gone way up since I've been the coach, mm -hmm. how I feel, in a, in a long time. And I don't know about fairness of criticism. Everybody has their opinion. They can do whatever they want. But I feel like my resume is pretty damn good for coaches that are just starting. And how long do you get before they say, okay, it's time for you to go and then start it all over? It's not, it's not easy to recruit in Memphis. It's not, it's not easy to get players here. And I've done a great job of getting players to come here to Memphis and represent us in a great fashion. So how do you, I don't, I don't understand it. I get what they're saying, but I just, I don't understand it. And you like, you like being doubted, whether it's in the city, whether it's the bracketologists, whether it's any of that. Right now, with four games left with your season, do you like the fact people are doubting that you and Memphis can get it done in four work? Well, everybody has their opinion again, but again, I'm a competitor. You know, I'd rather it be the other way, already in, and we're playing for a championship, but we're in the situation that we're in right now. Got to get out of it, but I'm a competitor, so I'm always ready for a challenge.